And also something, something that's great is this is our third year, and this is the third year that we're having these two come back for films. We've had the premiere of IDS, or Incest Death Squad 2, Mediatrix last year, and now IDS Rising. So, for those that aren't familiar with the Incest Death Squad series, fill them in really quick, Corey. So, uh, Greg, if you would indulge me uh, for a moment. Greg's gonna, Greg's gonna help me out here. We, we walked through this earlier for everyone. That's, uh, here we go. <clears throat> I have a dream. <laughs> uh, all right, Greg, you can pull up. Incest Death Squad. Uh, we started Incest Death Squad uh, back in 2008. Um, Incest Death Squad was originally a script titled Moonshine, uh, which is a shit title. Terrible movie title. Um, but uh, we started that. I sent it to uh, Lloyd Kaufman uh, from Troma who sent me, actually called me on the phone and said, uh, I, I, I like the idea, uh, this is great stuff, uh, keep at it, blah, 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 blah. I subsequently then met uh, Lloyd Kaufman and he said, if you do the movie, uh, you should make your own damn movie. Does everybody know Lloyd Kaufman? Yeah. The great Lloyd Kaufman. Big round of applause for the great Lloyd Kaufman. Of course, everybody loves Lloyd. A true champion for uh, independent exploitation film and... Uh, independent cinema uh, in and of itself. So uh, he told me, he said, make your own damn movie, Corey. And so um, he said, if, if I did make the movie, he said, uh, just let me know, I'll come and I'll be in it for free. So that was all I needed to hear. So we made Incest Death Squad in 2009. Uh, we made the sequel in 2010. We took a year off. We made a little movie called Mediatrix, uh, which is very, very, very interesting and uh, fucked up. And uh, then we made uh, IDS Rising uh, this year. And uh, basically, IDS Rising was made um, just because a lot of people asked for a third one. And we didn't, um, you know, I mean, I don't make these movies to uh, be a millionaire. I don't have delusions of grandeur, um, you know, to, to kind of make a living out of the movies. I do them because if I didn't do them, I would go crazy. And I love everybody from Melissa uh, to Carmela and uh, Greg and of course, Shannon, who's in the crowd, and Tom Lodwick, and um, everybody else, and Eric, and you know, everybody else that comes, and uh, Neil, and you know, Annie, of course, Annie Clift, who helps with the movies. If I didn't make the movies, I would go insane, and um, probably not be the healthiest person in the world. I'm not, still not the healthiest person, but I would really be worse. So, uh, this movie was basically just kind of made as a true prequel sequel, so if it doesn't make any sense to you guys, I apologize. But you can always come and buy parts one and two and it'll make sense to you. So I appreciate you guys for coming out and supporting independent horror, supporting independent cinema. You guys are the fucking greatest. Love you guys. Love John. Woo! Woo! All right. All right. If you guys, if you guys like your exploitation extra filthy, then I think it's time that we start rolling with the world premiere of IDS Rising. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. So this was, if you didn't see it at the end, this was Wisconsin made filth out of Columbus. Absolutely. Columbus and Madison. Absolutely. And um, now you went on record after IDS 2 yep. saying that you were done, that you weren't going to be doing another IDS movie. You apparently lied. So, lied. Bad, yeah. so tell us uh, about the past two years and why you returned to the family. To the franchise. Well, um, I, I did the first two incest movies and then, I know that sounds crazy. I did the first two incest movies, good for me. And, uh, but we took a break, we did uh, Mediatrix, which of course had Greg and, uh, and Katz was in that one with us too. Um, but took a break from that one, but I went around with Mediatrix and we premiered the movie in Tulsa, which was crazy. Those Okies love that sick shit. I mean, they're crazy. They're crazier than you guys, man. Um, but they love that stuff. So we went down there and we premiered the movie in Tulsa. And it was crazy because I had like, I don't know, like a half a dozen people came up to me. They're like, are we going to get an incest death squad three? And I'm like, what are you nuts? So what the hell's the matter with you? Really? You want another one? And uh, then we did Madison. And we came here with Mediatrix and such. And we went to uh, Minneapolis and things. And I, I kept getting that question. I'm like, gee whiz. And everybody, you know, I mean, Annie and Carmella and Melissa and Greg and everybody, Tom, who couldn't join us tonight, 
um, they were all like, you know, yeah, we'll do another incest death squad. So then we, we actually screened part two uh, in Madison, and it was me and Tom and Carmela and Greg, and we were all together, and it just kind of felt like the band was back together, you know, like the old Blues Brothers kind of thing, you know, we're getting the band back together. And uh, it just felt really good, so I went back and wrote it, and I was like, what the hell's the difference, man? I said, we're all here, we're all friends, we all love each other, so let's, uh, let's do another one. So, we did! So, there it is! Aren't you guys happy? Yes! Do we have anyone in the crowd that has questions for Corey or the cast or crew? I see. Hand coming up. DJ. Um, so I noticed that the religious theme throughout all of your films. Yeah. <laughs> Very religious yeah. fan. Very religious. It was subtle. What's that? I'm sorry. <laughs> Where does your deep-seated love of religion come from? Um, the deep-seated love of religion. The first movie I wrote, like, around the time that uh, 9-11 had hit and Bush was kind of coming out and talking about this pipeline to God that he had and all this weird shit. And uh, that was kind of where, like, the manipulation uh, angle kind of came from. But, I mean, if you watch the movies, in all honesty, I was talking to Craig about this earlier. I said, if a Christian person would watch the movies, they would see that I'm not, like, bashing religion. I mean, like, religion, organized religion, yeah, but not Jesus or God or Buddha or Kali or, you know, any number of things. No, I hate all of them, but that's beside the point. But, no, it's... Uh, it's just kind of a whole manipulation thing, and that's like one of the biggest things that I've found that people kind of hold over everyone's head, you know, kind of the fear of going to hell. So that was really what this was, right, Greg? Right. See? <laughs> so that's really it. I don't hate, uh, I hate organized religion. I hate anybody, except for at like horror festivals. Otherwise, I hate everybody organizing. It scares me to death. But horror festivals, I like it when people organize at horror festivals. That makes me feel good. But otherwise, at church, it scares the shit out of me. Anyone else got a question for the cast and crew? Gotta be somebody. Right there. Oh, yep, we got one down here. Oh, there we go. I noticed you left it with a question mark. Does that mean there just may be a part four? I don't know. Who wants to see a part four? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how the hell I would do a part four. I know Daddy's still alive and Amber's still alive. and But uh, who knows? We may do a part four. And if we do, we'll be here, John. Yay. <laughs> with bells on. Aren't you lucky? Isn't everybody lucky? But, I mean, as long as I got a shot, I just want to uh, kind of introduce everybody. Of course, Shannon Larson, who was in the movie, um, and Melissa Murphy, who's been in all the movies, and Carmela Weiss, who's brilliant, and uh, Annie, who has been with me since uh, day one on all these movies, and if it wasn't for Annie, I couldn't have done these movies uh, at all. Um, so really, Annie should get the directing credit on these movies and the producing credit and everything else, because I would be absolutely screwed. Uh, Michael Katzenberger, of course, Katz, the brilliant one and only. Fuck the Amber. <laughs> uh, Greg Johnson, ladies and gentlemen, who is a who is a force, a force to be reckoned with. Eric Wood, who did, who was acting in the movie Jerking Off in a Car. Um, he does that anyway, he says. <laughs> and of course, John Went and Joe Price, the bar rapists who got their comeuppance in this movie. They'll be back. They'll be back. They'll be back all burned to shit. But yeah. <laughs> so maybe the next one we do is in space. Joe. I'm just looking for the right action movie. <laughs> looking for a Die Hard, something like that. But yeah, so these these guys, I mean, you know. I mean, we've been together for almost four years now uh, doing these movies, so I love these guys uh, so much because I couldn't have realized, um, you know, my dreams and aspirations of making weird fucking movies uh, if it wasn't for these guys, you know what I mean? So I love these guys so much, so I applaud you guys. I you applaud know. you, Corey. Thank God. Bless you. Thank you. Now, speaking of weird fucking movies... Yes. I think it might be the right time to talk a little bit about Ed Gein DDS oh, and, yeah. and, and uh, Hole in the Wall. So why don't you give a plug about that? I can do. Uh, Hole in the Wall. Uh, Derek Carey. Where's Derek uh, in the building here tonight? Oh, he's, he just in the oh, he's back there someplace. Uh, Derek Carey, Frank Anderson, a lot of very talented people. Greg, of course. Uh, we're kind of doing a movie that is a collection of a lot of the guys in Wisconsin that are doing horror and exploitation movies. Um, and doing an anthology, um, yeah. and everybody kind of gets, you know, and, and it's it's not like looking at it and saying we have to come up with 
with this, everybody has to make the movie like this. Everybody kind of is allowed to make whatever kind of movie they want, and then we're going to put it all together as a wraparound with Hole in the Wall. And uh, my little <laughs> segment of it is uh, called Ed Gein DDS. Uh, and it's exactly what you would think it was. Ed Gein's a dentist uh, in the movie. <laughs> and the funniest thing is, and I'll make it brief, um, I wound up with the dental chair from the Mendota Mental Health Hospital about two, three years ago. Um, a friend of mine, Tom Running, who played the bartender in this movie and was also in the second one, he plays Ed Gein uh, in that movie, but he called me one day out of nowhere. And he goes, hey, he goes, my friend who works at the Mendota Mental Health Hospital, he goes, he's got the dental chair sitting out on his boulevard. He goes, you want it? I'm like, fuck, yes, kinda. <laughs> And so Greg actually went and picked the chair up and dropped it off at my house. And the creepy bastard is still sitting in my garage. My poor wife's got to walk by it every day. Bless her heart, I love her. Um, but she's got to look at that stupid thing every day. But we actually, we started shooting the movie. We have Judith O'Day um, from Night of the Living Dead. Barbara uh, is in the movie. She plays Ed Gein's mom um, in the movie. So that scene's already shot. And of course, she's in Safe Inside, which is Jason Paul Collum's. Uh, new movie that Derek uh, worked very feverishly on and is still working on and hopefully yeah. you guys can see that really soon So that's really cool, um, but she shows up in the movie and uh, yeah, Ed Gein just pulls teeth out and Acts <laughs> fucked up so should be pretty cool, but yeah hole in the wall So hopefully next year man, hopefully we're here with hole in the wall so you guys can see Ed Gein is a manic dentist <laughs> Great stuff. Sweet. Well, I can say <laughs> It's been three years of Hoshkosh Horror. We've had you three years here, so let's hear it for Corey and the cast and crew of IDS Rising. World premiere this very evening. This very evening. They will be upstairs in the upper lobby. They got copies of...